My name is Dave, and in this video, we're going to focus on for loops. So we've seen while loops, do while loops, and the for each loop, and we've seen that loops are a way to perform an action over and over. Right? It executes uh, some code, a code block, over and over, x number of times, or until a condition is becomes false. So, and, and that's very, very, very common in, in programs. You want to do something over and over again, and and C Sharp gives you, uh, you know, a few different ways to, to do this. So, uh, we talked about the for each loop, and sometimes that's just not enough. That's not uh, sufficient for what what you're trying to do. It just depends on what you're trying to do, and if a for each loop, uh, it, it, you know, is it good enough? Then the alternative is the for loop. Right, and the for loop, the the syntax is a little bit a little bit more cryptic, I guess, not quite as straightforward as the for each. Uh, but we're going to break it down. It, you'll see when we break it down, it's it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, so if you're following along, I have a form app. I name mine for loop. You can name yours whatever you like, and I have a label. So I just dragged a a label from here. Uh, I just drag, you know, just left click and drag uh, a label onto the form. Also, this uh, numeric uh, box, right? This uh, number up and down, numeric up and down. All right, this box here, the uh, this control. These are called controls, by the way. This numeric up and down control, I just left click, dragged it over here, so I have one of those, and I have a button, and I just change the text uh, on the button, and again the properties are, are over here, uh, whatever you whatever you have selected, these are the properties that are going to uh, show up, and most of, most of them are self-explanatory text, is the text that's displayed here, uh, so we, we've seen this before. If you don't see properties, the properties panel, uh, or the properties grid, you can uh, press F4. You can always press F4. You can also right-click on the control and click Properties here. So you can get to it this way or press F4 uh, either way. So we have a uh, we have one label. We have one numeric up and down control, and I have one button. Right. So let's take a look at the syntax for a for loop. And just like with the for each and the if statement and the while, uh, you can type in the first, uh, we'll type in for in this case, just type in for, F O R, and tab, 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 tab. And that sets up this stub, right? This, this for loop stub. Let's do it one more time. F O R, and tab, 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 tab. So, so now we have our for loop stud. And I'm holding the control down and scrolling with the mouse for the uh, to zoom in. You can also use the. Uh, no, never, never mind. You can't. <laughs> I thought you could use plus and minus signs. I'm, I'm thinking of something else. But you can use the scroll on your on your mouse. So. All right. So we're zoomed in. This is the for loop. Uh, the for loop syntax. Uh, I, I remember way back in 2000, I took a, a course on uh, JavaScript, and I remember seeing a for loop just like this, syntax exactly the same as uh, JavaScript and uh, uh, several languages actually. And I remember thinking, man, this looks so complicated. You know, this is like, well, you know, what the heck is going on here? This is, you got to be a genius to understand what, what this is, what's going on here. Uh, but I eventually found that when I broke it down, it's actually pretty simple it's, it's, it's nothing and there's nothing going on here that we haven't seen in these video uh, tutorials so so let's let's break this down uh, we can see we have three parts there are the three parts to this there are three statements statement one statement two statement three right so we have three statements here so in the first two have the semicolon at the, just like we've seen before with statements. Statements end with a semicolon. The last statement does not. There is no semicolon there, so we don't need one there. But the first two statements do have to have that semicolon, and we're just separating these these three statements, right? So we have three statements, 
and we're separating uh, separating the statements with a semicolon, right? So let's take a look at this uh, first statement. And take, I, I, recommend, uh, I, I recommend hitting pause, clicking on pause, and see if you can work out what this, what this statement is doing. Okay, so uh, this isn't anything we haven't seen before, right? It's uh, the int is we know that's a data type. We've uh, we've seen that a lot. The int is a is a whole number data type. So we're just declaring uh, a type, right? Just, you go back to the the box uh, analogy, the you know food only. It's same same thing. Here we're just we're declaring a box. We're declaring a variable, right? This is just a just a variable. This i is just a variable. Actually, we, we call it a range variable. It's a range variable. Just like with the for each, it gets uh, assigned in term uh, whatever's next. So you, you got a list. So you got a list of, you see you got five items on your list. The first loop, the first item will get assigned to that, to that variable, that box. The second loop, the second iteration, the second item will get assigned to that box, right? Or get dropped in that box or assigned to that variable, and and so forth. Right? The third item will, will get assigned, and the fourth. So, so we call this a range variable, a range variable. If that's not clear, we'll, we'll see some examples of that. So the i is just a range variable. The I could I can name this whatever I want. This uh, the i is a convention. It's a convention in programming. The i is short for iteration. You can name this anything you want. Let's, let's rename it loop count. Actually, loop count is probably a little more clear because that's uh, more specifically uh, you know, what it's doing. It's a loop counter. Let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, so I just changed the name to loop count. Note, note that it, it updated all of these, or both of these, right? So uh, you just change it here, and it's going to update it here and here right so I just changed it to loop count let's go ahead and change it back and just uh, so it all fit on the screen I typically use I's uh, the, the variable the name I but just know that it, the I does not have any special meaning at all it's just a variable just like any other variable it's just a variable it's, and, and naming it an I is just a convention right it's, a, it's one of those conventions a lot of programmers use it you don't have to you can name it you know what it, you you can name it foo if you you can name it anything right so so I is just a convention but uh, typically you do want to be descriptive with your uh, with your uh, variable names and this isn't very descriptive but you know it's a convention that you know most programmers will, will recognize and it's, uh, so so you can use the I or you can use anything you want but the main thing I want to stress here is that it does not have any special meaning in and of itself it's just a name it's just a variable name that, that uh, confuses uh, some people so the I is just a variable it's just a variable name right you can name it whatever you want as long as you follow those naming rules you can name it whatever you want so uh, so this first statement we're declaring the type data type as int we, we're uh, creating our box, right? We got this box, this variable in the computer's memory, and what is this equal sign, right? We've seen this a uh, number of times. It's an assignment operator, right? We're assigning what's on the right to what's on the left, right? So we're assigning this to this, and it's got to be of that type. It's got to be of that data type, right? And typically, this is what you do with a for loop. You start with zero. You assign the range variable uh, zero. You drop a zero in that box, right? So initially, it has a, a value of zero, or it holds a value of zero. So we're going to start at zero, and that's m more uh, most of the time. That's uh, that's what you would do with a for loop. Okay, so let's go to this next statement, and again, I recommend. Uh, clicking on pause and taking a few seconds to try to work out what's going on here. So we've seen this before. This, uh, you know, what is this uh, angle bracket, right? It's a comparison operator. It's a less than sign. We want to know is this less than this, right? 
is this less than this? And the length here, uh, this length is that's just the default for this stuff. You can uh, and actually let's go ahead and put a we can put a number we can put a literal number in here if we want. Uh, we can put a variable in here. Uh, but it's here we're just we're checking to see if this number, if I, you know, this is a variable that initially holds the zero, right? We're checking to see if it's less than this number. So this is our conditional test, right? This is our conditional test. And this for loop is going to keep executing until this whatever's in this code block is going to keep executing until this condition becomes false. As long as that condition is true, it's going to keep on looping, right? So that's the second statement, and, and these are two things that we've seen before, right? So there's nothing new here. And same thing with this uh, I++, plus plus, right? You know, what does that do? So the plus plus, we've seen that. It's just an increment operator. It just adds one. That's all it does. It just adds one, right? That's all it does. So you're just adding one to I. You're just adding one to I. It's a shortcut, right? And you could also do it this way. I plus one. That's all it does. So you, you're just taking whatever's in this box, right? Whatever numbers in this box, whatever, whatever this box holds, you know, take it out, take it out of that box, right? Add one to it, add one to it, and whatever the result is, stick that result back into that box, right? All right, just stick it back into that box or that variable. So that's all that's going on here. You're just adding one uh, to to the variable, to whatever's in that variable, whatever you know, whatever that, that holds. So there you go. This, I mean, that's it. It's uh, it, it looks a, a little bit cryptic when you first look at it. Uh, it's not as straightforward as the for each, but if you break it down, uh, you see each each one of these statements we've seen before. All right, we're just uh, uh, declaring a variable. We call it a range variable here. It's just a variable, and it's this variable is only good within the scope within this for loop. This is the scope. We, we could say this is the scope of this variable is this within this code block. If you try to use that I outside of the code block, it's you know it's not going it's not having you see the red squiggly line. It, it's not happening. You can only use it within this for loop. That that's its scope, right? Okay, so let's look at demo one. And we've got a for loop, and we're assigning this uh, the range variable i zero. Right? It's going to start at zero, and most of the time that's what you do with the for loops. We've got our condition, which is uh, less than four, as long as this i, whatever's in this box, whatever's in that variable, is less than four. Keep executing, right? So as long as that's less than four, it's going to keep on executing. As soon as it becomes equal to four, or or greater than four, then the then the condition will be false, and then they will be able to stop looping, right? So it's going to loop this code, whatever's in this code block is going to execute as long as this condition is true, right? And here we're using the long way here. I we're uh, adding one to I, and whatever the result is, we're dropping it back in that box, right? So we take uh, we take whatever whatever number is in this box and add one to it and then drop it back into that same box right so that's all we're doing here I and mean, we're just using the long way here we could use the shortcut uh, the I++ we'll, we'll stick with that for now okay so and the message box this throws up a dialog box we'll see that and we've got a string yeah, we can only put strings in here. We can only put strings in here. We can only print strings to the screen or, or uh, in text properties or, or anything. We can only do strings. Uh, when we're displaying text, we're, uh, we can only use strings, right? So we got a string here. Why, how do we know this is a string? The quotes, right? The double quotes. So we know this is a string. The plus sign. What's the plus sign again? Uh, we got two strings, you know, we're dealing with strings, the plus sign is a concatenation operator, right? It's, it's joining or combining strings together, gluing strings, you know, super gluing strings together, right? So combining strings together. The I is not a string, it's an int, 
right? It's not a string. So we cannot concatenate this I with the string. It's not, it's not happening, right? We can't you know, be like adding a letter you know, to a number. You know, how do you, uh, you know, what's A plus 5, you know? Uh, well, let's just, let's just algebra or something. But uh, So th that's not happening. So what we have to do is convert this to a string, right? So now it's it, it gets converted to a string. And a string is, just, again, just plain text, right? So it's not a number that you can calculate with. It's, it's just plain text. So we gotta, we got to change it, to convert it to plain text. And that's what this toString method does, right? So, uh, so let's go ahead and run this. Uh, And we should see the dialog box pop up, I believe, four times. Okay, so this is the first iteration. Uh, I is zero, right? We converted it to a string, and so it's just this is just plain text here. Concatenated it with this loop. I got a little space here just to make it look neater. Uh, see, it, it zero I has the initial value of zero. The condition is true. Uh, I holds a zero. Zero is indeed less than four, so this is true. So it executed the code, and then and then uh, then it's going to add one to that. Uh, it's going to add one to the. It'll do that the, the next time it, it uh, the next iteration. Right? Okay, so now it's added one to that. It took that number that zero out of that box, added one to it, put it back, put the result back in the box, right? And I, one is still less than four, so our condition is still true. And so it executes this code, and the code just displays this message box, right? And uh, just it, we've concatenated the string loop with the, uh, the, the number i, right? The int i, and we've converted it to a string. So uh, loop two, loop three, and so it's four, four loops, right? Or, or four iterations, right? Okay, so let's take it. Take a look at demo two. Uh, this time, I'm going to use a variable here, and that's probably that's more uh, likely that you would use a variable or a property on a list. Uh, we'll see that in a little bit. So we've got uh, uh, int, a variable, we got a box, right? And I'm just, I just named it length. Name it whatever. Uh, I put a thousand, the, the value uh, of a th thousand in there. So this is an int. I've dropped this one thousand you know, in there, and so I have this box that holds one thousand. So once again, the i init uh, initially has a value of zero, so we put a zero in that box that we call i. The condition is as long as i is less than whatever's in this variable, whatever happens to be in there. And then we just add one. Here we're using the shortcut here, just plus plus, just add one, right? Just, and then we're we're writing this i, whatever it is, to to the screen, or uh, to the output window, right? And we got to convert it to a string, uh, so uh, we can only write strings to to the screen. So so we have to convert that number to to a string. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. See what it does. All right, so this is printing to the output window. Again, if you don't see the output window, you can go to debug window and click here. Debug windows and click on output, and you should see it at the bottom here. So you see all these numbers: uh, zero through 999. Zero through 999. So it started at zero and ended at nine. 99. So why did it end at 9.99? Well, you know what? It started at zero because initially the i has a value of zero, right? That's the initial value. It, st it stopped at 9.99 because it, as soon as this, because when this added one, you see it's, this is 9.99, and this added one, then of course it became 1,000. Well, 1,000 is not less than 1,000. So this condition became false. And then it stopped executing. All right, the for loop it just get it's over with. You know, it kills the, the for loop. As soon as this becomes false, you know, that's it. Right. So I of course is not less than, uh, or one thousand is not less than one thousand. So this became false, 
and so it stopped executing, right? Okay, so with demo three, I have see I have a, li uh, a list uh, like uh, like we've done before. So and remember the this right here is we call this a collection in initializer. That's the fancy term for this co collection initializer. You don't have to do this. You can just add them this way. That's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm adding. Uh, strings to this list both ways just to remind you of, of both ways and this is just kind of a shortcut way of doing it you can just do it this way that's fine uh, either way so and, and a lot of times you don't you don't know what you're going to add to it so uh, you may add to it later uh, when you first make the list you, you may not know what your what values are going in the list so but if you do then you can use you know, either way to, to populate that list. So we have our list again, our store list, right? We got some, uh, we got honey buns and nutty buddy bars, all kind of good stuff. So we got our store list. So we're going to use this store list. We, we got this, this is our variable. This is our box that holds this list, right? Our box of boxes, if you will, box of smaller boxes. So we've got this, this list, uh, this variable that holds the list. I've already populated the list. We've got uh, two, four, six, seven items uh, in the list, and let's play around with that list with with the for loop, right? So here I've got some a couple of variables up here that I'm going to use. I want to declare the variables outside of the for loop. Uh, I don't want to declare it within the for loop. If we declare a variable inside the for loop, then it's going to it's going to declare that variable every single loop, you know. And say you're looping 10,000 times, it's going to declare that variable 10,000 times, and that's just kind of a waste. We don't we don't need that. So I'm I'm declaring these variables outside of the for loop, right? And then I'll just reassign uh, the, the value. I just put a different value in the box every every iteration, right? So the first one is is line. It's a string. It's going to hold a string. Initially, I just give it an empty uh, string. You could also do this. That's the same thing. It's the exact same thing, right? Just two uh, double quotes. Uh, so that's an empty string. Or you can do you can use this way. Uh, I, I think this way is just just maybe a, a bit more clear. Uh, but you know uh, you can use whatever you like. Uh, either way, it's just it's just an empty string, right? So enumerator, what I want to do is enumerate my list, right? Uh, one, two, three, you know, one period honey bun, two period nutty buddy bars, whatever. So we want to enumerate the list. So I, I've named this variable enumerator, right? We can name it whatever. But, uh, initially it has a value of zero, right? So if we look at the for loop, the syntax here, uh, or the... Uh, I've, I've changed the I to loop count just to be a bit more clear of what this is and uh, you know you don't have to use the I of course as I said I is just convention so I've changed the name to loop count and so and that's more probably more descriptive you know of what it actually is it's it's counting the loops right that's pretty much all it's doing so once again we're just declaring this range variable you know declaring the range variable give it an initial value of zero we want to start at zero and our condition is as long as whatever's in this variable this loop count range variable as long as it's less than the count store list dot count this is a member of store list right this is our list store list right and this one of its members, and we're going to talk about members in another video. One of its members, and we just, we access this its members through this dot or through the period, right? Just period, and that gives us uh, IntelliSense. This is IntelliSense. It gives us its members. These are all its members, right? And as you can see, there's a bunch of them in here. Uh, so what we want now is the count member. This is a property. It's a property, and we want the count property that just counts the numbers in the list right so one two three four five six seven that's all it so this is going to give us seven in this case if we had 20 items in the list this would give us 20 if we had 10,000 items in the list this would give us 10,000 it just counts however many items are in that list right so that way if you add items or remove items you, know, you don't have to keep going back and changing this 
this this property is going to get that for you right it's going to get that for you so you know however many items are in the list this is is what this is going to give you that number all right so and this is very very typical of a, of a for loop loop count plus plus just adding one right just adding one to this so that second iteration zero uh, plus one and then one plus one and two plus one etc just adding just incremental operators just adding one right so as long as this condition is true then whatever's in this code block is this is going to keep executing as long as that's true right one statement at a time it's going to keep executing over and over again as long as this condition is true as soon as that condition becomes false then it's over with it's going to stop right Okay, so let's look at the code block, and I have my uh, enumerator. That's my variable. I have initially initially gave it gave it a value of zero, so it has a zero right now. And I'm taking the loop count, and I'm adding one to it. I'm adding one to it. Note though, I, I do not want to use this here. You don't want to use this here because then you're you're adding one to the actual value of and, and here I'm using the i actually is. Just to make this clear. Let's go ahead and loop count. Okay, so you wouldn't want to use the plus, the two, the incremental operator here because you would add the the value. You would add one to this variable, right? So uh, so you know, think about what would happen. This is zero, right? So the the first iteration. It's if, if we use plus plus, uh, well, let's use that here. All right, one sec. Okay, so let's say we're using the plus plus here. This first iteration, this loop count is zero. Right here, it's going to add one, but it's going to add one to to our box. So now this is one, right? So then we go back here. Now it's going to add one here. Then it's going to be two, right? So it's basically, we're we're going to be skipping a number. It's going to it's going to be out of whack, right? And I recommend trying this, typing this in, and uh, see what happens. You know, see, uh, you know, take a look at your variables in the in the debugger, right? So we don't want to we don't want to add one that way here, right? We don't want to use the incremental operator. So I'm I'm taking whatever's in this variable loop count add one to it and then drop it in this this variable right this uh, enumerator this is, uh, holds an int so just take take out whatever numbers in that loop count add one to it and drop it in this box uh, enumerator the reason I want to add one to it is I don't want I, I want to enumerate the list and I don't want to start at zero right I don't want to zero period one period you know I want to start at one so so I'm adding one to that right so line this is our string uh, variable variable that holds a string right now she's got an empty you know initially it has an empty uh, string so we're taking this enumerator which is an int right we can't concatenate ints you know this holds a string so you know we, we can't put an int in there so we got to convert it to a string hence the two string method and then we use our plus sign right uh, which is our, our Cat nation operator, we're gluing strings together, right? And we're going to combine this string to this string, which is just a period and a space, right? So that's where we get our, you know, one period space, or, you know, one period space, honey bun, one period, two period space, you know, ice cream, whatever. So the plus sign again, again, the concatenation operator, we're concatenating. And store list. This is our store list, and now we're using the the index operation. This is index operation. This is our index number. Remember the the list starts at zero. The indexing starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. We have seven items, but the index number start at zero. Right. So, and, and this is why it's just so common for this uh, initially, this range variable to have a value of zero, because the first item in a list starts at zero. It's not a coincidence. So, this is the index op operator uh, or operation, the square brackets, right? So, this is the same. The first iteration, 
you know, we're putting a zero in there, and then the second it'll be a one, and then a two, and then a three, and etc. So we're just doing that a little bit more, you know, dynamically, if you will. So whatever value this holds, and the first time it's going to be a zero, and then we're going to add one to it. The second time around, it's going to be one, so it's going to be one. The third time around, it's going to be two, so it's going to be two, etc. Right. So we concatenate all this and assign it to this box this variable called line and, and print it to the console right so let's take a look at let's take a look at what happens and click the wrong button right, sometimes you got to be patient with me all right yeah I, okay so let's go to output okay so there we go we have seven items one period, honey bun, two period, and the reason we're starting with one and not zero, again, because we're adding one here, right? So, and we got the period space, and the store, we're using the index operations, uh, index op operator, index operation to get the, the values from the list, right? So we're putting index numbers, right? Like zero, um, and debug. It, if that happens, you just uh, if you try to edit the code when you're in debug mode, it's gonna it's gonna bark at you. So you just click on the the stop debugging button. I do that all the time. <clears throat> so the first time is just it's like zero one. Uh, so we're just putting the variable loop count. So whatever whatever number is in there, uh, that's that's gonna be our index number, right? Okay, I just want to just comment this out and uncomment this and I just want to show you could do this uh, actually I didn't want to uncomment that okay you could do all this on one line if you wanted to it's uh, sometimes it's a good thing to condense your code uh, you know but it's, sometimes it's, it's just it's not necessary because a lot of times it's clear I, I think this is actually better than this but I just want to point this out the reason is this is probably a little more clear if you combine too much on you know one or two lines, then uh, you know it's 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 harder to read. So I I would stick with this in this case. But you could combine all this to one line if you wanted to. This does exactly the same thing. Uh, but we're just combining it here. We're using the note the parentheses. We're taking the loop count, adding one to it, converting that to a string. And we have we have to have the parentheses here to so that way it knows that this is we're treating this as basically one thing, right? So we convert that number to a string, uh, add one to it first, concatenate. So so here we're just com combining these two lines to one by using the parentheses and putting this in, in parentheses. But but again, you, you don't necessarily need to uh, condense everything you know too much. You know. Sometimes a good thing, but if you do it too much, then it's harder to read, and you want to make sure that it's clear uh, for who, who's ever reading your code. And you want to make sure it's clear for you when you come back to the code. Okay, so let's go ahead and comment that out. And let's uncomment this. And I'm going to stick a a uh, breaking point right here. And let's go ahead and step through this. Okay. All right, so we're stopped right here. So see, the count is seven, right? We got seven items in our list, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, and if we added one, this would be eight. Yeah. Right? Uh, so it's whatever, however many items are in the list, right? And we're using that that count property. We access it with that dot access operator, right? We're going to talk about members uh, later on, so you give you a better idea of what's going on there. So our condition is loop count this variable as long as it's less than whatever this is. In this case, it's seven, but whatever it is, as long as this is less than that, then our condition is true, and it's going to keep executing this this code block, right? So loop count our range variable initially has a value of zero. Here we add one to that. So let's go ahead and step. And this has uh, initially a value of zero. It does anyway, but I, I like to explicitly do that. Even though the default is zero, I just I like to go ahead and drop a default zero in there explicitly. Uh, it just it makes everything clear. 
uh, for me, clearer. Okay, so keep stepping. Here we added one, so now this is one, right? Zero plus one is one, right? So uh, we have a one in, in this box, right? We don't want to use the, the plus plus here, because uh, that, would, that would add it to this, and you know, that would throw things out of whack. So, uh, okay, so we have our enumerator, which is one. We're going to convert it to a string because we get we have to assign it to this uh, this variable line, which only holds a string. 